Big Ten homestand for the Bucks will close out their play at the Horseshoe this season and a top 15 matchup in the country. As we mentioned off the top of the show, you get a couple years off from playing them. You have all that time to uh, gain a strategy, I guess. I don't know. Is that good or bad because you don't have your own film? Well, you know, you haven't played them yourselves. Uh, now, some of our older guys played them uh, way back, but uh, I think that's that sparring match at the beginning of the game because you really have never met them on the field of play, but uh, they were what we expected. They were good. Well, you get what you expect every week at the Horseshoe with the home crowd out there, 104,000 plus in Ohio Stadium. And uh, the seniors, they talked about it after the game. This is just one of those times they can feel the end coming. There's one of your old guys there. Yeah, Jim Lachey, Jim Lachey honorary captain and the champion in all ways. He was on our last uh, outright Big Ten championship team in 84. And then you see Greg Prenzel converting a first down on third and three. Yeah, the man is 1-0 as honorary captain That's right. also. So uh, we'll maybe have him back. Santonio Holmes emerging this young. Well, Santonio Holmes is a good player, and obviously with Drew's injury, uh, we needed someone to step up, and, and he's done that. There you see B.J. Sander, who uh, did a good job of keeping the ball away from them, and we got a little bit of roll there. And you have such a leg like his, and you're kicking short like that, you know, you try to just bang it out there to the side, and uh, our guys had good coverage. Well, he was honored by the Big Ten last week for special teams play and uh, did not let you down this week as well. Michigan State's offense, you knew they'd come out just slinging it all over. Well, there's no doubt. Smoker got a lot of confidence. He found his receiver there. We put pressure on him uh, through the little screen route, and uh, we had a lot of people getting to the football, and uh, as the game would go on, we would get a handle on him, but they're going to move the ball down here, and, and uh, they get it in the end zone. I don't know if we have a busted coverage there, or they just had great design but they got on the board. A game should buy with the touchdown catch, 22 yards, 7 nothing early on, and Michigan State uh, has a way of doing that against people all season long, getting out early, but here come the Bucks right back. Craig Prenzel on a 10-yard run out of the empty backfield, and he goes to the pass game, stepped up and found Ryan Hamby, corner route. What a heck of a catch there by Ryan, and a great throw by Craig Prenzel. I got to believe that's his best grab of the year so far. A nice one, and that sets up Mike Nugent, the first of many of these we'd see today. Well, four for four, and when you're four for four, you're going to have a chance to win the football game, and Mike Nugent's one of the best. And that from 44 and a 7-3 to three game after one period of play, and you talk about Michigan State outscoring opponents 45 to nothing in the first quarter. So those are the first points this season against Michigan State in that first quarter. Is play. that right? Well, here they found uh, the double pass back to Jeff Smoker, and they're about ready to put a second touch down uh, uh, on the board that was well conceived and they knew we were coming after him but we started putting more and more pressure on we're stopping the run game cold and I don't know if they ended up with plus yards for the day but if it was not too many and uh, we started putting more pressure on the passer as we went here you see Smoker had a little bit of pressure and Tyler Everett big play there and I thought he might be gone but he said he got tightened up a little bit he hadn't been in the game that long he said he he, uh, he really couldn't stretch it out, but boy, what a huge play for our team. Certainly did the offensive favor because with Michigan State driving uh, conceivably a 14-point turnaround because they could have scored a touchdown there. And, you know, if you can turn this into seven, which you like to do off those turnovers, and you get it the other way. Well, no question. There was an offsides on their part. And, you know, the penalty thing was 12 to 2 or something, and we felt we needed to get better in the penalty, penalty category, and uh, we did and set us up for... Good looking situation here. Good step up by Craig Prenzel. He finds Ben Hartsock. Man coverage and he got lost in there and big touchdown for Ben. Big guy like that gets lost in there? Well, when they're crossing and playing man, <laughs> you know, they play a lot of that banjo man where they pass him off and, and uh, he got, got lost there. You see Will Smith stopping the toss sweep. Rob Reynolds. Uh, they couldn't run the football the whole day. That's a 10-7 Buckeye lead, and as you mentioned, not being able to run the football. Here's another example of that single-digit rushing yards on the day. Uh, no doubt. There you see Rob Reynolds and Dustin Fox on the on the job, and, and uh, if you can stop the run, you got a chance. Here we come back to the air. Uh, Craig Krenzel finds Mike Jenkins on a comeback route, and we had run some deep balls by them and had some chances for big plays, and now they started to back up on us. 21 yards complete, and then the big hitter. Uh, that, we put the the ball right in the right place and Santonio Holmes did a great job of using his body and Santonio's a playmaker and he's it's going to be a good one for us. Actually interfered with as well on that Flag play so a, a strong play certainly a highlight of this game on second and eight from the 37 37 yard touchdown and Jeff Smoker and these guys are not going to quit. No they're not and they've got great design and they're going to have a chance to move the football and uh, they took it down the field and banged it through and uh, put three more on for the Spartans. A history of good field goal kicking at Michigan State. Dave Rayner, no different there. He knocks it through the uprights. A 48-yard field goal at 17-10. Good pressure there, and, and uh, A.J. Hawk was on the job. Stopped, uh, stopped that play as he went. 
Here we're getting good pressure. Darian Scott on the sack, and Will Smith's right there, and great effort by Darian. Darian Scott, a loss of nine on the play, and at the end of the first half, we find the count 17-10 uh, for the Bucks. And offensively, you come out, obviously, you want to keep it out of their hands and what Jeff Smoker can do uh, with some ball control. Um, it's not exactly working out. Lydell Ross has 11 yards at this point in the game, but uh, you're seeing something in there. You must be seeing something in there. Well, we did a little bit of our quarterback run package. You know, we weren't sure just how much Lydell was going to be able to carry the ball, and we certainly wanted him to be able to carry it in the second half. He had had, you know, a couple weeks worth of getting banged up and, uh, you know, didn't run it as much. Uh, but we felt like the second half we had to turn it loose, and we did. Well, second half, uh, plenty of highlights in that, and they will be straight ahead on Buckeye Football Weekly. We're back for second half action here on Buckeye Football Weekly and Ohio State. 17-10 uh, game you're in right now. Can Michigan State, uh, with their type of offense and teams like that, dictate what you do? I mean, obviously, you want to have ball control, and you want to be able to uh, set the tempo, but the way they do things kind of makes the tempo different, and this, the scoring's going up in this game. Well, and you know that you're never safe with Michigan State. They can put points on the board fast. Their 95-yard scoring drive was in six plays in like two minutes. Uh, so we needed to hold on to the football. We needed to come out ready to go. We knew it was going to be our football to start the half, and we needed to establish the tempo of the game with our offense, with the uh, ball control, but also with the with good pass, too, because we needed to move the chains. Certainly establish the tempo here at the start of the second half, uh, because the first two drives were stellar, some of the best of the year. Well, they really were good, and, and there you see Mike Jenkins catching the, the nice little crossing route off the uh, bootleg from, from Craig, and then a little bit later here you see Roy Hall uh, coming up with the comeback catch, uh, which, you know, when you get 17 and 20-yard routes, that type of thing, uh, along with wanting to establish that run, now all of a sudden you can start pounding it in there, and good little cut by Lydell there, and, and uh, I thought he played an outstanding second half. He takes it 13 yards down to the two-yard line after 29 and 19-yard receptions, and then Ryan Hamby, another tight end wide open. Well, we had our jumbo personnel in there. We didn't have any wideouts. We had an extra lineman, and, and uh, we ran the first down, and we came back the second down and threw our little play action off, and it was big, and uh, unfortunately, the the one play of the day I'd rather not uh, look at is uh, the long kickoff return. And, you know, this kid has done a great job all year. He's had a 100-yarder against Minnesota. He had one against, um, I think it was Rutgers. Yeah, he's a good one. Yeah, that's his third, and that is a team record for Michigan State. 93-yard return. The last kickoff returned against Ohio State for a touchdown was Jim Lachey's 84 team against Michigan State, also 93 yards. Well, then, you know, maybe... Maybe we'll be all right there. Maybe he's Brandon, one and one then. That's right. Brandon <laughs> Joe catches a nice little dump off route right there. Now we come on the boot route. Uh, Craig Krenzel finds Ben Hartsock, and Ben is doing a nice job carrying the football. I think he had 50 some yards in receptions. Tiptoe down the sidelines. He there. did. He, he looked. He looked agile. There you see Lydell Ross running the stretch play, and and again, uh, you know, when we're mixing up run and pass, uh, we have a chance. Ten yards on that pickup, and Brandon Joe is playing a bigger and bigger role as this season goes on. Uh, you see Brandon hitting it up in there, and, and uh, I think he'll spend more and more time uh, in the ball game now that he's healthy. You see Chris Gamble on the screen. We thought we could get a little bit more back than we did. We got about nine or so on that one, uh, but unfortunately we needed to go for the field goal, and fortunately Mike Nugent is perfect again. Yeah, Nugent is automatic from that distance. 27-17, to 17, Ohio State takes a 10-point lead at this point, and that is the end of the third quarter, and moving towards the fourth quarter, you really have a chance to salt this one away and seal up a win because the offense is really starting to hit it. Here you see Ben Hartsock. I think it was third and three, and he, he caught the ball for the first and ran for another 10 or 12. Uh, then you see the running game going, just pushing them off the ball. Adrian Clark, Nick Mangold, uh, Lydell Ross making good cuts. I'm not sure what the length of that run was, but it was over 20 and moved us up close enough again. And uh, there you see Mike Nugent. Banging it through. Nugent from 42 yards, and it's a 30 to 17 game. Obviously, you'd like to turn the threes into sevens. He had four of them. Yeah, we really, really would. And here, uh, putting pressure on Smoker again, but he keeps it alive and, and uh, throws it up top. Dante Whitner comes back with it. I really thought Dante would have gained a little bit more. We have to talk with him. He used to be an old running back kind of guy in high school. But sure, he's hearing it was, buddies. That's right. It was a great turnover. And now they brought in their back to maximum protect. Uh, there you see a good play there by Tyler Everett, breaking it up, and uh, kids are playing aggressive. Yeah, already with a pick on the day, and uh, another good rush here leads to an incomplete pass on second and 10 from their own 33-yard line. Darian Scott's chasing them. Uh, 
when he goes to his left, it's a lot harder for him to be accurate. And uh, our guys put great pressure on him. Lydell Ross totaled 125 yards in this game, and uh, he gets 34 of them on this carry here late in the game, getting stronger. Well, you know, it really is, and the guys up front have to give a lot of credit to, and, and uh, uh, great looking hole, great movement by Lydell. Great to see that uh, third straight 100-yard game. Get it down to the one-yard line where Mike Nugent bangs it through. And a 33-17 to 17 lead for Ohio State. Offense, defense, and uh, that special teams man getting it done. Well, that's right. And uh, Michigan State's not going to quit, though. Uh, they, they're they going after it. Uh, they're not able to run much, that's for sure. Uh, but they, they're not going to quit trying to get down there and, and moving the ball down a little bit. And he came up with a big catch. Yeah. Got to give him credit. He went up and, and uh, got it done. They went for two, which would bring it to eight. Uh, the ball was thrown a little bit behind, and now all of a sudden when it's a 10-point game with three minutes, that's a lot different. Aaron Alexander with the touchdown catch, and it's a 33-23 game, and the hands team in, Mike Jenkins. Yep, Mike Jenkins does a good job in that second line there. Ben Hartsock was there in that front line, and, and uh, we ended up punting it down. Then they went four straight plays, and we got to, to kneel down and end it. Well, any thought there at the end of doing anything differently than uh, first and goal at the five when you get the ball back with a no, minute left? There was no need for a touchdown, and they couldn't call a timeout, so um, it was a good football game against a good team. Yeah, no style points. A 10-point win is what it ends up to be. Um, looking at some of the players, Santonio Holmes, is that just proof of how deep this receiving core has been all along? His first half catch for a touchdown, where's he been, a lot of people would say, but he's been behind some other pretty good ones. Well, yeah, and, and uh, Santonio Holmes is going to be a very good player. Uh, Drew Carter was a senior having a great year, and, uh, you know, if it's, if it's a, a guess between a senior and, and a redshirt freshman, uh, you know, we're always going to opt for the guy, as long as he's doing what you know, the team needs done. And Drew Carter was having a great year, and Santonio had, was having some playing time, but now, obviously, he's having more. Well, we'll hear from some more players here in the next segment. We are just two minutes away from that, and we'll be back with more on Buckeye Football Weekly.